Foreign military bases in Africa have long been a source of contention, with many African governments feeling pressured to assert their sovereignty and demand that these bases be removed. Despite widespread calls to end the presence of foreign military forces on African soil, few governments have taken decisive action. This reluctance may stem from concerns about the potential consequences, such as diplomatic fallout or security risks. However, recent developments indicate a shift in some African nations' attitudes toward foreign military presence. The actions of military juntas in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger to remove French military bases represent a bold departure from the status quo. These leaders, motivated by a strong commitment to national sovereignty and independence, made the brave decision to take control of their country's defense cooperation agreements. By terminating these arrangements and demanding the withdrawal of foreign military forces, they sent a clear message that African nations are capable of asserting their autonomy and protecting their territorial integrity. These actions not only represented a significant departure from previous complacency, but also instilled a sense of pride and empowerment in citizens who had long hoped to see their governments take a firm stance against foreign intervention. In fact, everything they've done since taking power, from kicking out the French to abandoning eco-wars and collaborating with non-Western countries, has completely shifted African geopolitics and created uncertainty in the heart of the West about their place in Africa. And now, one of them has taken a risk that no one, including the world's superpower, could have predicted. The Niger military junta, led by General Tiani, announced through his spokesman that military cooperation with the United States had come to an end. The United States government certainly did not expect to hear that. Remember that after Niger kicked out French forces, there were rumors that the US would be next in line, but nothing came of it and it appeared that the military government of Nigeria and the U.S. had reached an understanding. However, with the recent announcement, any understanding between Niger and the United States has been shattered. The announcement came after U.S. officials, led by Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs Mali Fee and General Michael Langley, commander of the U.S. Africa Command, paid a visit to the Niger military government and met with Niger's Prime Minister. So, what exactly prompted the Niger Junta to make this major decision? First, according to the statement read by the spokesman, Colonel Amadou Abdramena, the U.S. delegation that visited Niger did not follow diplomatic protocol by not informing the Niger military government of the delegation's composition, arrival date, or agenda. That is not surprising given that when it comes to dealing with Africa, the U.S. and the West have always maintained a superior attitude as if they know better than Africa, and because they are supposedly superiors, African leaders are expected to clear their schedules for them. It is the reason why a U.S.-Africa summit is held in the United States rather than Africa. Clearly, sending delegates to Niger without properly informing the Niger government is a way to exercise authority and demonstrate power. Regardless, according to Abdurmani, the U.S. delegates were warmly welcomed into the country and began discussions about Niger's current military transition, military cooperation between the two countries, and Niger's choice of partners in the fight against militants linked to Al-Qaeda and Islamic State. Speaking of military transitions, U.S. delegates stated that the military government of Niger must quickly return to constitutional and democratic rule if cooperation with the countries is to continue. Furthermore, the U.S. delegates stated that Niger's choice of partners in its fight against terrorism, referring to Russia and other non-Western countries, such as Iran, must change if the two countries are to cooperate militarily. Imagine the audacity. How can a foreign country enter another country and begin to dictate what happens there? Does this even make sense? We can now understand why the Niger government decided to end things with them. In response to their demands, Niger's military government stated that they intend to return to constitutional rule as soon as possible. However, Nigeria's partners include the United States. He also added that Niger forcefully denounces the condescending attitude of the U.S., accompanied by the threat of retaliation from the head of the American delegation towards the Manchurian government and people, and that this attitude is likely to undermine the quality of our centuries, old relations and undermine the trust between our two governments, which had already begun to break on October 19, 2023, when the U. 
falsely accused Niger of indicating a secret uranium deal with Iran. According to Abdramain, Niger has never signed a secret agreement with Russia or Iran, and all of its agreements with other countries are transparent and adhere to international standards. He went on to say that the United States employs a similar strategy to justify its military intervention in Iraq by making false accusations. This is an excellent response to U.S. delegates because it appears that after the coup, Niger began collaborating with Russia, Iran, and other non-Western countries. However, Russia and Iran have been Niger's partners for decades, albeit not as pronounced as they are now because previous governments were still Western allies. However, records show that previous governments acquired weapons from Russia and Iran. So why is the United States making such a big deal about it? It's because, unlike in the past, they've realized they're not at the top of the list of African partners. More African countries are beginning to prioritize Russia and other non-Western countries, which the U.S. does not want because it would mean losing control of the situation. One interesting question is whether the United States truly believes that the military government of Niger will agree to the condition that the only way to continue military cooperation with them is to end its partnership with Russia and Iran. Did they truly believe that they were so important? Come to think of it, what has their presence in Niger done to alleviate insecurity? The answer is absolutely nothing. How can the world's greatest military power be present in a place while insecurity and terrorism persist and even increase? What role has so-called terrorist surveillance played in Niger's fight against terrorism? Again, the answer is nothing. The truth is that the U.S. base is only there to ensure that terrorists do not cross the Sahel into the West, to demonstrate its military might, to be prepared in case West Africa decides to act against the West, and to gather information on West African countries. This means that the U.S. military is in no way beneficial to Niger, a concept that the U.S. has failed to grasp. So, demanding that Niger end military cooperation with countries that want to help them fight insecurity in exchange for continued military cooperation, which hasn't benefited Niger in any way, has to be the dumbest idea the U.S. has ever had. Recall that after French forces were kicked out of Niger, a top Pentagon official stated that the United States cannot afford to leave Niger and will do whatever it takes to remain in the country because the United States base in Niger is not only a critical component of U.S. security policy, but also where intelligence is gathered throughout West Africa, implying that it is a spy base. The U.S. base in Agadez, Niger, was built six years ago for $110 million and has spent that much money maintaining it. According to Langley, commander of U.S. Africa Command, losing this base would mean the U.S. losing its eyes and ears in the Sahel. If the United States truly wanted to remain in Niger, it should have followed Germany's lead and stopped dictating and interfering with Niger's actions. Unfortunately for the U.S., it has refused to learn, and the military government of Manchuria has officially terminated with immediate effect the military accord that allows U.S. military personnel and civilian staff on its soil, which means those 1,100 troops must depart Niger. The only thing left is for Niger to officially declare that the U.S. should pack up and leave. Speaking about the presence of the Nigerian Niger is illegal and violates constitutional and democratic principles. He pointed out that the appropriate representatives were not consulted before the U.S. forces were deployed throughout the country. Instead, the United States unilaterally imposed itself in the country via verbal note, number 174, dated July 6, 2012. He went on to say that this agreement was not only unfair, but it also failed to meet the Nigerian people's goals because, first and foremost, it required Niger to pay bills related to taxes on the American military. Second, Niger was unaware of the number of U.S. civilian and military personnel stationed on its territory, as well as the amount of equipment deployed and information gathered about the terrorist. Third, the United States military had no obligation to respond to any request for assistance against militants. This means that if Niger requested assistance in combating terrorists, the United States had every right to refuse. So, what use is their military cooperation to Niger? This simply demonstrates that the U.S. military was in no way beneficial to Nigeria, yet they had the audacity to make demands.
As Ibrahim Tror stated when he kicked out French forces, there is no point in having a foreign military presence in the country if it is not contributing to the fight against insecurity, so they must leave. Niger's decision will undoubtedly cause another massive shift in African geopolitics, and we are eager to see how it all plays out. What are your thoughts? Please let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.